Gunsmoke, brought to you by L&M Filters. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L&M. Superior taste, superior filter. America's best filter tip cigarette. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. The transcribed story of the violence that moves west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. It's just something to taste bad, so mm. you'll remember a doctor's been here. Mm. Hey, go ahead, go ahead, drink it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you being here all right. Oh, I don't know why I keep coming by all the time either. Oh. You know, you don't need doctor and Job. You're going to outlive us all. If it's the money, Doc. Oh, now, forget about the money. If I'd wanted to get rich, I'd have gotten out of this game a long time ago. But I'll be able to pay regular now that the boy's back. The bo- you mean Tad's back? <laughs> yeah. He, he come in day before yesterday riding up like he'd just been to town for the mail. Instead of being gone four years. Well, what, did he say where he'd been? No. No, Doc, he didn't. But it don't matter none now that he's home. Ah, oh, do you a lot of good having Tad around? Yeah, that's a fact, Doc. Well, I just about give it up being out here alone all the time. Didn't seem like it was worth keeping going. A man should never do that, Joe. Well, sure not. But a man's wife dies and his boy lights out. Seems there was nothing left. And I just got teenier and teenier. It's going to be different now, though. I hope so. Well, i got to be getting along now. Thanks for coming, Doc. Yeah. Oh, say, Tad's outside there someplace. Why don't you stop and see him? Mm, yeah. That boy sure growed up man size. <laughs> yeah, you bet, Job. I want to see him. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> you Tad? Yeah, I'm Tad. Well, it's been quite a spell since I've seen you, lad. I'm Doc Adams. I remember. <laughs> yeah. I just been with your pa. I've seen you drive up. Yeah, well, I thought you might like to know where Casey's been. <laughs> He's crumbling, like everything else around here. But, you know, you can help him. <laughs> well, you know, it's a good thing you're home, Tad. How do you figure? Well, uh, there's, there's not much that I can do for him. He's old and he's tired and he's, he's just about worn through. But, but you, you can do a lot for him. You mean you want me to nurse him? No, oh, I don't want you to nurse him. <laughs> but, but you can do the chores for him. Or you can keep the place going. And most of all, you, you can talk to him. Talk to him? Yeah, that's right. That, that's mostly what I've been coming around here for. <laughs> to give him somebody to talk to once in a while. Now, look, Doc, I ain't this little boy no more. I ain't going to hold his hand. Well, I don't remember asking you to. Maybe not. But if you think I come back here to take care of a broken-down old man and a broken-down farm, you got another thing coming. What did you come home for? I come home because I didn't have nowhere else to go. But I'm taking care of that right soon. Oh. 
Well, I... All right. Someday this town's gonna find out about me. Find out good. Come by Job Harley's place. He's awful anxious to see you. Oh, it's trouble. Well, he didn't tell me, Marshal. He said to ask you to come out there right away. Oh, my. I hope that boy of his ain't been acting up none. Oh, uh, I better go out there and see, I guess. You watch the store, will you, Tester? Yes, sir, I will, Mr. Jones. about raising boys, Marshal? 
That's a little out of my line, Joe. Well, a man wants his boy to carry on all the good things he's got. None of the bad. Yeah. That's a pretty big order, isn't it? But that's what a man wants for his son. To be good. To be better than he was. Uh, some boys never grow up to be the men their fathers were, Joe. It ain't easy raising them. A man don't want to mother his boy to death. Nor ride herd on him too much, neither. But... You're going to tell me something, Joe. What's a man to do? When he finds his son has just picked up all the bad way. And none of the good. What's a man to do then, Marshal? Let go of him, Joe. But a man's son, Marshal. He's carrying his name. He can't let him carry it to perdition. He can't hurt your name, Joe, only his own. That ain't true, Marshal. I ain't been much. The people I come from weren't much neither. But we always kept the name clean, Marshal. What's Tad and done, Joe? Where is he? A man don't expect his son to strike it rich, maybe. But he expects him to keep the name clean. Joe. Joe, will you tell me? Well, tell you what, Marshal. Why did you call me out here? You just didn't want to talk about your boy, did you? Marshal, I always like to talk to you. And you've always been a good friend? I am your friend, Joe, but you better start talking straight or I'm heading back to town. You're going to find out, Marshal. Mr. Dillon? Huh? What's Chester doing out here? Yeah, what's the matter? Mr. Dillon, there's just been a holdup, bang. What? Any shooting? Yes, sir, there was. Well, how many were there? Just one. You get away? No, Mr. Harley, he didn't. Was he hurt? Worse than that, Mr. Dunn. Well, who was it? Well, he's dead, ain't he? Tad's dead. Tad? Was it Tad, Chester? Yes, sir, it was. I'm sorry, Joe. You had to be. You don't seem surprised. No. Marshal, I've been seeing it coming. Ever since the boy come home, he was bad clear through, Marshal. He's robbed before and killed, too. He told you that? He carried pieces out of newspapers around with him, pieces there had been written about him. Well, he was proud of it, Marshal. Said it made him feel big. Well, some of them feel that way for a while. I couldn't talk him out of it. I couldn't hold him. But I could see it was stopped. Well, you knew about today? I knew. Oh, why didn't you tell me about it? I figured you'd take his gun, maybe lock him up for a while. He had to be stopped for good, Marshal. I might have done that if I'd been in Dodge, Joe. I know that, Marshal. But it would have gone hard with you to have to kill my boy. You're my friend, Marshal. That's why I seem to it you'd be here. And then I sent word to the bank that Tad was coming. Oh. You made a hard choice, Job. Well... Like I told you, Marshal, man has to keep his name clean. Gunsmoke. Under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Parley Bear is Chester, Georgia Ellis is Kitty, and Howard McNair is Doc. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week 
as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke. <laughs> 